pushed to the ground, Adrian's entire weight pressed down on me, pressed down on you. Hello, everyone. This is not the greatest screen to start on, so let's pull open the fucking fragments. Hello. Oh, man. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's a bit of a fucking cluster, ain't it? Hello, everyone. My name is Vivian Jade, the trained unprofessional. Welcome back to fucking Burroughs. Burroughs. Um, it's the hero route. Uh, and we got a fragment. Uh, this is right after the fucking mushroom took us over. P diary. September 15th. Some of my medical supplies have gone missing again. This time it was a bottle of disinfectant and a box of cotton swabs. No small change given how hard it is getting everything delivered out here. I don't want to suspect the staff, and I doubt they're sipping my aqua vitae over this cooking sherry in the kitchen, so that just leaves... No, you wouldn't. We've been through too much. P. Delange. Hmm. There's some shit going down at the doctor's office. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. I'm pushed to the ground. We've done. S the scent of damp earth invades my nostrils. He grunts, pinning my arms in place as I squirm. The, the, this is when I was like, oh, I don't, I don't like it with the fay. But someone in the comments was like, like, dude, you got fucking like intergalactic gods, fucking playing dim uber dimensional D and D with your the fate of humanity like what's a few fey <laughs> it's just it's just a lot it's a lot of new stuff man anyway we're squirming squirming with the worming oh geez no 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 what we see that's her nose oh what the hell was atri's voice calm down you fool you're coming don't you see them Underneath us. I don't know why Gray was fucking had an accent there. It's just an illusion. It can't hurt you. How can he not feel it? Oh my god. Oh my god. Giant roots sneak and coil through the dirt towards us, ready to pull us in. He presses down harder, wrapping his arms around me and resting his chin against the back of my neck. Just fight it. Don't move. Huh? And everything goes dark, and as he pulls some fabric over my eyes, pulling it back tightly in a quick knot. What are you, shush? Shh. Focus your breathing. I. I. Focus on what you can feel, not what you see. Put my eyes and stare into the void. Only tiny traces of light leak in. My breathing slows as I imagine myself floating through the darkness, cradled. And it's for a gentle, cold, gentle embrace. That's it. Slowly. Next, I inhale deeply, taking in the scent of the world around me, the strong smell of soil, a tree, a tree's breath against my neck, the distant hint of that in the atmosphere. Petrichor? I don't know. As my body relaxes, so too does his grip. Go slack as he sits up, gently rubbing my shoulders. I know you could do it, friend. Have your wits returned to you then? I think so. Kind of heavy. Ah, forgive me. He rolls off me and jumps to his feet, dusting off his pants. Can you stand? I nod and he gives me a hand, unsure of my surroundings without the use of my eyes. What was that? He sighs, scratching his chin. Well, I wanted to explain it yesterday, but the little one didn't want didn't seem receptive to this sort of thing. This thing being magic. <laughs> Oh, Grandma explained magic to me many times. This is different. 
what I just felt was nothing short of a nightmare. You're quiet. Sorry, just thinking. Ah, oh, no worries. Quite this tis quite the quandary. I don't want to assume, but do you fancy yourself a modern gentleman? A man of science and reason? Uh, half and half. There's there are too many unexplainable things out there. Chuckles resting an elbow on my shoulder. Well, leave that remaining half a reason behind when you walk in these woods. They'll do you no good. I don't understand. He sighs, tapping his foot. This is no ordinary forest. The locals refer to it as Der Marschenwald. Time to get out the translate camera. The camera. Ah, fairy tale forest. The fairy tale forest. Ooh. Even with my sudden bout of bilingualism, that term takes a few seconds to process. A fairy forest? Yes, a place ruled by neither beast nor man. We are merely guests here, and thus the Fey make a final decision on who is allowed within their domain. I've heard some tall tales, but this is outlandish, even for him. Listen to the boy. He speaks no lies. Seriously? Oh, so why the fuck can we hear that voice here, but not in the other one? Do not underestimate the power of the unknown. It would be quite cavalier for one to presume while visiting foreign lands. I guess. Also, who are you? Gray. I blink away whatever that was and turn towards his voice. Sorry. Um... So, fairies. Indeed. Just out in the open for everyone to see. Wouldn't more people wouldn't more people know about this? Ah, you seem to misunderstand. Let me explain. Lightly tugs on my blindfold, careful not to pull it off. The influence of the Fae affects everyone differently. Some simply wander off the path, losing their way for a little while. Others begin to see things that aren't really there. Feel things. I rub my neck, the feeling of those sharpened roots poking against them. Still vivid. Um, uh, huh? And some, like Hero, are unaffected altogether. Why would he be Im Im immune? Sorry. I think he shrugs. Then he, rem he then remembers I can't see. Oh, well, there's no real rhyme or reason. <laughs> the Fey don't operate on reason like you and I. I think to s I like to think they judge us on a case-by-case -case basis, and some get a lighter treatment than others. You seem to be more affected than most, however. Right. So I'm just unlucky. No surprises there. Who knows? But in any case, I find a blindfold helps mitigate some of the stronger visions. Ah, uh, yeah, but... I try to take a step and almost trip over my own feet. How do you get anything done like this? He belts out a laugh, slapping me on the back and nearly sending me tumbling over. It took some time, but sight isn't the strongest sense for us ungulates. Really? Man has grown too reliant on sight. There are so many other ways to navigate the world. He boops my nose, making me sneeze. This be a domain tool we use. My sense of smell is decent, yeah. You can't use it to tell if there's a cliff in front of you. Oh, well, that is true, but between you and me, means in his mustache tickling my ears, I find wearing clothes interferes with that skill significantly. You don't say. He did say he often walked around the woods nude. I suppose there's some logic to that primitive as it is. Just as your cute little whiskers are tactile, so is every patch of fur on your body. You'd be surprised how much information one can gather when not marred by heavy fabric. Are you sure you're not just a nudist? Uh, well, I won't deny that there's an appeal to it. It does sound kind of freeing. 
Something else is on my mind, though. So, if you know this place is dangerous, why continue to hunt here? Hmm. I'm sure you could find another village close to another forest. Why put yourself in danger? <laughs> because it's fun! Eh? Don't you have a sense of it? Don't you have a sense of adventure, Gray? I come here willingly, remove on a I come here willingly, remove one of my senses, and well, whatever happens, happens. They're getting tied up and needing help. Is the will of God. I trust in his plan, and thus nothing can hunt, hurt me. Is there any greater source of strength and faith, pure and simple? I can't say it's done me much good, but I'm happy it's working for you. Ever since my childhood, I've felt drawn to places like this. If I had my way, I'd purchase some land and live out here full time. That sounds kind of... You know, this conversation's been pretty, you know, calm. You know, we don't need this, this scary-ass music throughout this whole thing. Anyway, that sounds kind of... Whoa. Yeah, you've been needing to shit this whole time. Surprised you didn't pop out a nugget when he fucking body slammed you. Gray. Stomach grumbles, and I suddenly remember my original mission. So, uh, while we're on the topic of survival, how does one relieve himself? Um. I lift my blindfold to see him smirking, twirling a spade between his fingers. I think you know the answer, possum. Fuck. Fine. Start digging. Okay. Okay. Oh, for the love of God. The chapter transition has to be a fucking toilet paper roll. You had to put a leaf on there to clarify. There isn't toilet paper out here. Dots. Don't fucking... Can you just skip this, please? Please skip this. I don't want to fucking narrate a shit scene. And you got fucking hoity-toity music. So, it's come to this, hi, huh, Gray? Why? Why? Why you- why you gotta- why? <sighs> I gotta make sure it's safe. Okay, there's nothing showing, but this is fucked, man. The expression's funny, though. This is Swan Lake. <laughs> You used to live a high life. Is he- does he blink? He does blink! Holy shit! People waved at you. People waited on you. Hand and foot. Through all that way to prove a point. But slumming with your friends would be noble. Sure, the days were long. And returns were dreadful. But you stuck it out to maintain what little amenities you could afford. And now... Shitting in a hole. In the woods. In the middle of nowhere, Germany. At least Atri understood and left me to do my business in peace. He isn't completely feral, I guess. God, this is uncomfortable! Is this really how our ancestors did things? But Virgil's laughing his ass off somewhere right now. <laughs> he looked up! He fucking looked up! He's just like, this is fucking annoying. Is this gonna be Mr. Is this Mr. Yesterday or whatever? Oh, here now, isn't this an unusual predicament? What the? Oh, it's him again. What do you want, Todd? Kind of in the middle of something. The Todd. And is that any way to greet an old friend? And after everything I did for ya. The new rough section of my tongue rubs against the roof of my mouth and I shut. God damn it, I don't want to laugh. I don't want to laugh at this. It's the absurdity, God damn it! His, his, his so he's so grumpy right now, and this fucking Swan Lake in the background. 
And then fucking Todd showing up. I hope he just says like, get the fuck away from me. Todd's like, geez, all right, I'll talk to you in five. And then leaves. <laughs> uh, just tell me what you want. Can't go and talk at the same time. Cackles yipping like a wild fox. Well, you got my message. So I'm just here to give you a warning. Now, a warning. If a fly ever tries to talk to ye, don't listen to what it has to say. Okay. Did that gift of his also give me the power to talk to tiny insects? What a queer warning. Okay, yeah, this is that's Grandpa Gray coming out again. That's all. I'll leave you to your business. Thanks. The soft breeze, he's gone. Wonder why he doesn't show his face. Even without seeing him, he has a vulpine aura. Could he be involved with Vlar Virgil? Everything he's done so far seems to be for my benefit, but I'm not that trusting. Not after all the burning. Phew. <laughs> well, that didn't... That just, uh... That just had to happen, didn't it? That just had to fucking happen. Feeling a few pounds lighter, I checked to see the materials Atri left me. The appeal of the wilderness is dwindling by the second, and this toilet issue, if I can even call it that, isn't helping. I'm pretty sure these are just dried plant fibers. Scratchy to the touch like hemp. No way in hell that's touching my hole. Maybe reckless back there, but this is cruel and unusual. Can we not narrate the fucking wiping, please? Hey, A tree! Hello! Fuck now, what? Can't trek through the, the forest with a. Well, I just can't! Humph. Something moves quietly into view, holding what looks like toilet tissue. You're not. Using your blindfold. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Why is Hero- I mean, you were supposed to go back and talk to Hero, and so this whole excursion was a weird random extra jaunt. So this is a way to get back to where you were supposed to go. What the hero? Wait, wait, don't look at me! Rolls his eyes seemingly unfazed. Don't make this weirder than it already is. Sorry. Anyway, I looked all over town to try to give this to you, so you better use this. Use it. How did you even find me out here? Does Petra know you've left town? He growls under his breath. Eitri isn't the only one who has survival skills, remember? Plus, I could hear you screaming from town. I'm sorry for worrying you. Seriously, though, thank you for the tissue. Yeah, I mean, please don't finish that sentence. How did you even... Jams the roll in of onto a low-hanging branch and walks away before I can properly thank him. Eh, that's probably for the best given my current predicament. Let me just finish up here, and I'll be right as rain. Okay, can we get past the OW? This isn't much better than what Atri gave me. This is the best they can afford. Uh, bro. They didn't really have fucking Charmin Ultra Soft back in the fucking turn of the 20th century. Proper possum pampering aside, I finish up and fill the hole with dirt, forever sealing away my shameful deed. <sighs> uh, hey, hero, I'm done now. I got out of the brush, still not feeling quite as secure back there as I'd like. Over here. Follow his voice and step through some tall grass, seeing the Fenix sitting on a log. On a log. <laughs> sitting on a log across from Atri, who's fiercely rubbing a stick against a plank of wood on the ground. Ah, I see you found each other. Yes, unfortunately. 
He's been trying to show me how to start a fire for about five minutes. Ah, speaking in thy native tongue again. How mysterious. Come on, let's all use German so we can understand each other. Hmm. Hero already can make fire. Ah, impressive. He's actually quite the survivalist. Right, Hero? Atri's ears perk up and he looks quite expectantly toward the tiny fox. Hero just scowls, eyes to the ground and hints of red poking through the fur on his cheeks. Not big deal. Oh, come now, lad. I can tell there's more to the story. Uh, come on, I'd love to hear about your time in now. Not now. He briefly mutters something in Japanese. Not in front of him. I am sorry if I overstepped. It's just rare to meet someone I have so much in common with. As I twitches. What's his deal? I get that they disagree on some fundamentals, but Atri went out of his way to help him yesterday. Considering how friendly Petra was, I figured he'd be open to making new friends beside me. I feel an uncomfy itch down below and figure this is a good time to, as any to change the subject. Hey, uh, Atri? He stops staring into space and smiles at me. Yes. I, uh, feel the need to wash up a little bit after that. Do you have any water on you? He laughs and my face goes flush. Talking about this stuff is embarrassing enough. I understand. After I do my business, I usually wash up in the river near you by here. Look! He reaches into one of his many leather pouches and produces a misshapen yellow square. I make my own soap. Made from sheep fat. It works like charm. Soap? I just rub myself with sand before I we turn to him and he looks away again, arms crossed. I'm down to take a quick dip if it means I can avoid those public showers back at the village. There are shrugs and vague affirmation. Splendid! Let's all take a bath together then. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What? You can't be serious! Come on, it could be fun. I haven't been skinny dipping since I was a teen. I can't deny feeling some excitement from the idea. Plus, I've already seen Hatry naked, so it's only fair. Excuse me! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Long story. Not really, but I don't want to admit I've spent a considerable amount of time talking to a nude elk instead of looking for him. I'll be keeping my blindfold on, but I appreciate your chivalry. <laughs> your scars! Just say you can't get your scars wet. Just say that. Shoulders slump in defeat. Or not your scars, your stitches. Uh, I motion for Atria to wait and walk over to him, leaning in to whisper. Hey, what's wrong? Just tell me whatever it is, I'll explain it to him. I don't want this! I pulled back, not expecting an angry reaction. I just don't want all this attention on me! I don't, and I don't want to stop you from doing what you clearly want to do! Hero, please don't make a fuss over me. I'll just stay back and watch your stuff. Are you sure you're alright with that? Pushes away from me, rolling his eyes. Yes. Someone has to make sure your clothes don't blow away in the wind, right? I feign a smile. I wish I knew why Adrian made him so uncomfortable, but... Now's not the time. Alright. Thank you. Mmm... Here, Atri doing some of his signature cough, and we look back, waiting to hear his interjection. You know, I remember reading that group bathing is quite popular in the East. He's not interested. Don't push it, alright? He can read. Alrighty then, come now, it's only a few minutes walk. 
Before we leave, he gestures to his blindfold, and I reluctantly put mine on. The last thing I see is Hiro shaking his head in disappointment. He grabs my hand, guiding my fledgling feet through this new world of smells and sounds. Part of me wants to find out what's bothering Hiro, but now's not the time. After a few twists and turns, I feel us reach the bottom of a slope, and he taps my shoulders. We're here! Alrighty. Listen closely and hear a gentle current only a few feet away. There is brisk, but it's sunny enough that a dip in the river would would still feel refreshing. Ah. I hear a thump next to me, and I assume Atri is already stripping. Well, here goes nothing. It's a little awkward to undress without being able to see, so I bite the bullet and take off my blindfold. <laughs> 